In the last video, I shared with you guys the new entry into my 12-inch sub with a leaderboard. The Scar Audio VXF made the list. In this video, I will be sharing with you guys three of my top favorite subwoofers thus far. So stick around. We got that and more coming right up. <laughs> If this is your first time to the channel and you like DIY builds, comparisons, and competitions, please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. What you're seeing right now is the 12 inch sub with a leaderboard. Right now it only consists of three different categories. You have the $100 category, the $150 category, and the $200 category. But for all of you guys that's been keeping up with the channel, you know I recently added an additional subwoofer to the leaderboard. And I actually added three additional subwoofers to the $150 category, the $200 category, and I added a $250 category with the Scar Audio VXL. However, this is some pretty interesting times that we're living in right now. The coronavirus pandemic has affected shipping of a lot of different companies and I'm so sad to say that the Toro actually got canceled by the uh, manufacturer and it's not going to be shipped out to me so I'm going to have to find something new for you guys. But as you do know, I, I still do have the Sundown Audio E12 and to replace the Toro, I'm going to be adding an additional sundown product to the $200 category which is going to be the SA12 so stick around if you guys want to see more of that I have some upcoming videos in the future but right now what I want to share with you guys is my top three in my list thus far and that will be the Star Audio VXL the American Bass XFL and the Star Audio EVL12 on screen right now, what you guys are seeing is the setup. And I'm just taking you guys behind the scene to let you see how I test my subwoofers. Right now, what you're looking at is the Dayton Audio SA1000. This is a uh, Rex uh, amplifier for home audio specifically. And this is rated at 1000 watts. Right now, what you're looking at is my Samsung tablet. That is gonna be my, my sound source with my Bluetooth keyboard. This, of course, is the EVL 12 by Scar Audio. This is pretty much um, that once one of their most popular subwoofers in their mid tier lineup. This is a dual two configuration of the EVL 12. Next up, what you guys are going to be looking at is the American Bass XFL 12. This subwoofer here is by far one of my favorites. And they are in order. This is a dual uh, two configuration as well. 1500 watt RMS, 3000 watt peak. And of course, the newest entry to my arsenal is the Scar Audio VFX. This is also 1500 watts RMS, dual two configuration, 3000 watt peak. I do have a head to head competition coming between this guy and the VFX, I mean the uh, the American Base XFL. That is what you guys requested and that's what we're gonna be doing. So right now, that's what I'm dealing with. And what we're gonna be doing now, we're gonna be jumping right off into some of the tools that you're gonna need or that I use when I'm behind the scenes testing. Some of the tools you're gonna need is a digital multimeter, an oscilloscope, some type of wrench, and some wires those wires are going to be used for series and parallel configuration of the subwoofers and for wiring to the amplifier as well once again the uh, amplifier that I'm using is the uh, Dayton Audio SA1000 very good amplifier if you guys have never heard of it giving you a frontal view of it right here pretty 
pretty sleek looking, to be honest with you. No, no, not a lot of bells and whistles, but it gets the job done. Right now, what you guys are looking at is the oscilloscope that I'm going to be using to test here. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of the functionality of this uh, multimeter. I bought this specifically for the graph. I already have a multimeter, as you guys seen there on the table. But I bought this specifically because it has that graph on it. So what I'm going to do now is first connect the wires. You want to make sure you got plenty of copper touching your leads right there. Of course, you want to set the gain to zero when you do this. Before getting things powered up. Once you have things powered up, remember my signal source is going to be coming from the Samsung tablet. I'm running a, a tone generator application. Right now I got a simple 40 hertz test tone going through it. And what you're looking at me doing now is putting this on AC voltage. Because this is AC voltage coming from the amplifier. And once you get your 40 hertz test tone going here, You're going to see that I'm, ch I'm checking here to make sure that my gains are all the way down. But then you're going to slowly increase it and watch the voltage change here. See, now we're up to 10 volts, 11 volts, 13. And it's going to continue to climb from here. And what you want to do right now is keep an eye on this graph. You can change the layout of this graph as well. It's a pretty cool little tool. If you guys are interested in this tool, I do have an affiliate link. To Amazon in the description so check it out if you want to it helps the channel as you guys can see I do have the graph up right now and it's showing me the sine wave right now it's very smooth at 18 volts I'm going to increase the voltage until I actually get a um, a non smooth curve you want the, the top of the curves like that to become flat that's clipping you actually don't want that bag off of the gain a bit until you get those rounded waves again. In my case, it's around 52, 53 volts. But I do give it a slight overhead of, of about two or three volts. They call it a soft clip. Well, actually, I left it like it was. So you're looking at around, um, around 800 watts is what you're going to be playing with. Right now, it's just jumping to the wiring. I do use, but in this case, <clears throat> I'm using the uh, Sky High. I've had this wire for about four or five years, believe it or not. This is a uh, OFC 8 gauge. These are the terminals that I'm going to be connecting to the amplifier. The terminals, the five way binding posts here on the SA1000 are pretty beefy, as you guys can see. This thing is designed to put out a lot of power. And they didn't cheap out on the hardware, as I will show you guys here. Look at the ring turn. Look at that. Look at the, the, the screw terminal that goes on there. That's quality. They didn't, they didn't cheap out and just give you a plastic top. They gave you some actual metal in there. So what you guys are looking at right now is going to be the series wiring of all of these are going to be wired in series because all of these are dual two ohm. The SA1000 is only uh, stable at 4 and 8 ohms. So I'm going to, uh, by these being dual 2, you have to run each voice core in series, which meaning that you're going to have to find a positive of one voice core and the negative of the other and connect them. Essentially just making the core one long wire is essentially what you're doing here. So here we go on the other side, we're going to connect the negative. And the, um, the push terminals of the EVL have no problem accepting that 8 gauge. Pretty awesome. Which is a different case with the XFL with it being direct leads, but we're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, what you guys want to do now is take the leads, of course, from the amplifier and connect positive and negative respectively. And this is what it looks like. All right, so moving on. What we're going to be doing next is paying attention to the layout here. You have an input and you got the uh, the high pass output. 
we're going to be using the, L the, the uh, LFE channel. That's what we're looking for right now. The LFE channel right there. In order to get this done, what I'm going to be doing is sharing a couple options with you guys. Like, say for instance, most guys have RCAs laying around. But my sound source is actually going to be the tablet, which has a 3.5 millimeter head jack. And that's what I, I'm actually fortunate enough to have this set up. So it's RCA and it's terminated at the ends with a uh, 3.5 millimeter head jack. But some people in this case may not have that. You may only have RCAs. So in that case, you probably want to get something like this adapter right here, and that'll help you out. I've used this many, many times. I got plenty of these things. Just a tip that I'm sharing with you guys. Sometimes I use that, and you can use that as well. So we're going to get this tablet set up. If you guys are wondering what it is, it's a simple Samsung tablet. You can use your phone for this as well as a sound source in case you guys want to get a setup like this and test some stuff at your own crib and there we go got everything connected and now we're ready to test right now as you guys can see we got a 40 hertz test tone on the bench and i'm not going to play this sound for you guys i don't know if you want to hear this or not it's, i guess i will So the EVL seems to be taking that 800 like a champ. Plenty of excursion. This um, the EVL is one of those out of the box soft suspension subwoofers. It was softer than any other suspension that I've had um, on a subwoofer of this caliber. It was a very soft suspension. And right here, I give you guys a slow mo of the throw of the uh, exit of the EVL. Plenty and pretty impressive to me. So, what's the takeaway from here? If you guys have a system that's around 800 watts or so, get you an EVL. The EVL gives you this type of performance for 200 bucks. I mean, just think about that. It's rated at 1250 RMS. Everyone knows that, you know, free air play of a subwoofer is supposed to be. You know dangerous if you don't know what you're doing it is very dangerous but you as you guys can see in this environment it's clean power it's not gonna hurt it this thing can do this all day 800 watts wide open with no enclosure it didn't even run hot on me it didn't smell or anything I'm not telling you to go out and do this I'm just telling you what I do and what what I've done behind the scene and I'm bringing it to you guys for 200 bucks you can have this so if you just think of any of the competitors out there of Scar Audio. A lot of people will say, oh, you're a Scar fan. Well, I'm a fan of, of any, any quality product I can get on a budget. It doesn't matter what the name of the company is. If it can give me this for $200, I'm going to spend $200 with this company. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not a, a, you know, a case of, ooh, I don't like this or that company. I'm looking for a bargain. That's what this channel is all about, bringing it to you guys as well. So that'll pretty much do it for the EVL. But right now, you guys see what it can do on the bench. But what does it look like in the car? Anybody that's been watching the channel for a while, you guys already know. This is one of my favorite subs.
right, so next up is going to be the American Base XFL. The American Base XFL does have direct leads. And if you guys want to know or see exactly how I handle these direct leads while testing, just uh, just just keep it watching. So coming from the factory, these actually have uh, tinned tensile leads, so they are soldered leads, and they they, they do that to pre they pre solder them to assist you with soldering them to a terminal cup or whatever you're going to be attaching to them. I clipped that off because doing testing that stuff can get in the way. This stuff, if you don't know what you're doing, direct leads can be a pain in the ass. But as you guys see right now, I kind of make quick work of it. And to show you guys, I'm going to show you guys two different techniques that I use to uh, to work with a temporary connection for the um, these type of direct leads on any subway. So as you guys can see right now, I have speaker furrows. If you don't know what speaker ferro is, it's just a little barrel of tin copper. And um, when it, not all of them are tin copper. Some of them are aluminum and different types of metals. But for the most part, it's tin copper. And um, what I'm going to be doing now is sliding this on here. These things are, are awesome if you have any type of uh, in like bare wire right here and you're always inserting it into whatever you know over time these things will fray and just get everywhere they'll splinter and get everywhere so the ferrules keep that from happening you can put this in your amplifier screw down on those ferrules almost forever it'll have a nice indention there for you other than fraying your wires everywhere so what I do is what you see now I kind of like mesh them together get them good and married up And once they're, once they're married up like this, all you got to do is get your crimpers, like what I'm doing right now. And um, so you get your uh, wire crimpers going here. And what you want to do is flatten this out. You can easily do that with that pair of pliers that I showed you guys earlier. It's the exact same technique. All you want to do is flatten this out. You don't want to damage the wire. Do not use one of those uh, sections on your crimpers. Do not crimp the, you do not want to crimp this. You want to kind of save your wire. So just flatten the wire out. And that's kind of the technique I'm going for right there. Once you, and this is the second method that I use to kind of like temporarily um, uh, my, uh, uh, bend or mend my wires while I'm doing testing. Like I said, you don't want to permanently affix your wires. You want to get them to a point where you can undo this and still have your wires in good shape. So what I'm doing right now, I'm going to be using a zip tie. So the zip tie method is basically you, you strip one wire longer than the other one. And what you're going to do here is you're going to fold that wire over the other one. And once you fold, I'm sorry, let me go back. So you guys can actually see that. So you get one wire going longer than the other one. And then what you're gonna do is just fold that wire over the shorter wire. Once you fold that over there, just get the zip tie and let the zip tie do what it does. And there you go, you got a, a, a temporary solution right here to crimping your wires. You don't, I mean, to, to uh, affixing your wires clean things up and you're ready to move on so right now what we're going to do we're going to put the uh, American Base XFL 12 on the bench with a 40 hertz test tone as well and we're going to get it up and that's what it looks like the American Base XFL is one of those subwoofers that um, if you've never experienced it it doesn't have a whole lot of throw because it's very, very stiff. I mean, once you put the power to it, it got throw. But it doesn't need a lot of throw to produce sound. It's one of those type of subwoofers that just sound good. I don't know if it's the cone material, the way that it's constructed. I don't know. Maybe the surround, the style of the surround is designed to keep it as linear as you can get it. So maybe that's doing this job to the to the to the most because this thing sounds good without having a whole lot of movement. Um, 
But keep in mind that this thing is very, very stiff. And on the bench, 800 watts is getting it moving, but not like talking about it. So what I did, I said, okay, well, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put it on, on uh, 15 hertz and get it moving for you guys and let you guys see exactly how linear this thing is in, in its stroke. Pretty impressive subwoofer. It's one of those, I think, as a matter of fact, when I first uh, put this up against the Sky EVL 12, you guys actually chose the EVL 12 over the American base. If you guys wanna see my final result or my final thoughts on that competition, just click the notification on the screen above and you guys will get uh, my final thoughts on why I thought and still do think that the American base XFL is far better quality than the EVL. Not to say that the EVL 12 isn't a good uh, driver. You guys just heard what I said about the EVL 12. But for the price in which you're paying for it, and the fact that I got this subwoofer for like almost, what, 20 bucks cheaper than I, than I bought the EVL 12 for, this was a steal. This was an absolute steal. But enough for that. You guys see what it looked like on the bench. What does it look like in the vehicle? So as you guys seen just then, the e, the uh, XFL 12 looks damn good in the trunk. And like I told you guys, it got some throw to it. It just takes some power to move that. But uh, anyway, what you guys see on the bench right now is the Scar Audio uh, VFX, VF, VXF, <laughs> VFX. I always get that name screwed up. Uh, but anyway, this is my new entry to the 12 inch sub with a leaderboard. This guy right here is coming in at, oh crap, I this guy here is coming in at 1500 watts RMS and 3000 watts peak. And my bad on that guys, I haven't been updating the, the graph over here for you guys. If you guys look to the right, you'll see a little bit more information about the subwoofer. Like I said, it has peak power rating of 1500 watts high stitch, uh, double stitch rolls surround. And we're gonna be putting another 40 hertz touch tone through this guy as well. This thing has a massive 300 ounce motor. Frequency response 22 to 250 hertz. This is a true subwoofer, y'all. And there it is. 40 hertz test tone, 800 watts. RMS, clean power, clean bench power. But as you guys see, I'm gonna need a little bit more to push this guy. <laughs> this thing can take some power and it's really, really stiff as well. It's really, really stiff, y'all. So just know that if you only got 800 watts, you may wanna consider getting one of these other subwoofers because this thing right here is pretty much laughing at 800 watts wide open, laughing at it. Now don't get me wrong, uh, as I stated in a previous video, if you are someone who is trying to future-proof your, your, your setup, then this would be perfect for you. You know, if you just want to future-proof it, say, yo, I just want to get my subs in right now, I'll get my amplifier later. And if you got less than a thousand watts, you know, you can go ahead and do that. But if you're thinking you're going to be beating the block now with 800 watts and you get this guy right here, you're probably going to be disappointed because he needs a lot more than 800 watts. And right now what I'm gonna be doing is decreasing the uh, frequency and I'm gonna be uh, moving this thing down to 15 hertz and getting the cone moving for you guys right there. And 
And as you guys can see, 15 hertz look a little bit better on camera than 40 hertz did. At least we can actually see it moving a little bit more. And here's a bit of a uh, slow motion for you guys. I know, not as impressive as the EVA of a hang. This is a brand new 3000 watt subwoofer. It's not gonna move like the EVL. Plus the EVL is a lot, a lot softer suspension than this guy right here. But what I want you guys to do is to stay tuned for my future content of this because I, I already have been playing with it, just trying to get it loosened up. And this is kind of like what it's doing to my car right now. As you guys can see, this guy is no joke. Regardless of how stiff it is, it still is doing its damn job, okay? This thing gets down. It sounds amazing. I can't wait to edit this video and bring it to you guys and let you guys see what this one subwoofer is doing. I, had, I, I previously had a 15 inch subwoofer in my ride from uh peerless the peerless stw 350 one of the best subwoofers i've ever heard in my life and this thing here rivals that 15 i can't i can't believe it now don't, don't get me wrong it's not as powerful as the uh peerless is but man it it sounds freaking amazing okay just being honest with you it sounds freaking amazing so um yeah that'll do it for the vxf uh, the VFX. This thing is, I think, going to be a competitor for not only, I want to, I actually want to put this, I got a few subwoofers in mind that I want to put it up against, but I'm not going to say nothing because I don't run this channel. You guys run this channel. It's all about what you guys want. Drop some, some comments in the uh, sections below. What other subwoofers would you love to see me put this guy up against? I know you guys say you wanted this to be the uh, competitor for the XFL. I've already worked on that video. I'm editing that video as we speak, giving my final thoughts on that as well. Uh, but I want to know what other subwoofers do you guys have in mind for this guy right here? Because I'm, I plan on keeping it for a while and I really, really want to play with this a lot more. So leave you guys comments in the sections below and let me know, you know, um, what did you guys think about my favorite subwoofers under $300? Do you think this is a good uh, lineup? Do you guys think that um, I should be picking some other brands? I don't know. You guys got to gotta help me out here. I always reach out to you guys for help and advice because without you guys, hey, this channel is nothing. So let me know what you guys think once again in the descriptions below. And until next time, if you like DIY builds, comparisons, and competitions, consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.